Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft again, coming on with another video. This is a entry into Seriously Scrapping's 450 Subby Challenge giveaway. I think I've got the number correct. Um, so what I decided to make, Irene, I noticed Irene's getting into art journaling. So I decided to make her a little art journal to experiment and play with. It's one of my, it's my first um, little art journal that I've made after watching quite a few videos on YouTube. So it's actually made with a series of jelly prints um, and if you're not familiar with jelly prints, um, jelly prints are, a jelly plate is like a soft rubber plate that you roll paint out on with a roller and then you can make pretty designs, you can lay a stencil down, you can draw in it with your finger or other implements like a comb, you can put wavy lines on it um, and then after you've done your design in the paint you put a piece of paper over the top smooth it down with your hand and then pull the piece of paper off and you made a print on your paper. So some of the prints are what we call our first prints, our second prints are our third prints. They do have technical names but I'm not sure what they are off the top of my head. Um, even you can print over again over the top of it and I might show you that a few of them in the book. Um, so this book was actually made out of, it's quite thick so it can take a lot of um, a lot more of sticking and a lot more of things Irene can do to it. It's got four signatures. Um, this is my first book so what I've actually done with the signatures is I haven't actually sewn them in. I've actually just done the loop around method. I'll show you when I open it up. So this is the front cover um, and this is the back cover. So these are all jelly prints I've done. Um, so I've just used a basically a cardboard box that a, a cereal box that or a cardboard box from the pantry that come in. Um, so it's actually turned out quite strong. So this is just some crochet trim tied around it. So I'll just give you a view of the whole book. Um, okay, so when we open it up on the inside, so we've got jelly prints on the inside cover as well. Then we've got a series of, so I'm trying to lean over the camera and do this and not have my hands in the way, a series of four signatures. And what I've just done is this is Baker's Twine. And I've just looped it through the signature and then tied it around the back. So these pages can actually be, if I can get one without tearing it, they can actually be removed or more pages can be added in. Um, I'm just doing, excuse me for um, burping then. Um, I'm just starting with um, making these junk journals and art journals and I wasn't sure how I'd go sewing a signature. So I decided to make my first one like this. Um, so I've covered the insides with um, jelly prints and all these ones in the book are actually jelly prints as well um, or pieces of painted paper. So this one's first, this is a map, um, you may be able to see it under one of the stencilings. Um, so then you can cover this with paint or do something else. So some of these are made out of brown paper, um, so I had a big roll of brown paper so I cut it up and used it on my jelly print as well. A lot of the back pages are blank so you can then go in and do whatever you like to the to the page. You can go in and collage stuff in here. You can go and use it for photos. It's another one. This is a stencil and I've just blopped paint through it. Um, had some extra paint left over when I was using that stencil for a project. So I just grab out some of this brown paper that I've got a huge pile of and just add stuff to it. So this is another one using a couple of stencils. So they're all different sizes for a junk journal. And these are just the back. I'm trying to hold this and being framed with my camera. Okay, so that's the end of that signature. So this one's again brown paper with a stencil and then some paints just got popped on the top of it. Um, I've also put in some, this is just baking paper. Um, us Aussies would know it as glad bake baking paper that you put down before you bake your biscuits or you put in your cake tins. So that prints up nicely on the jelly print and it's sort of, you can see it's translucent so you can sort of see my hand under there. Um, another one with a stencil. Some more, some of this is what I call my wipe off paper. So when I'm jelly printing, I have a stack of paper just beside me, and this is the stencil that I put on. This is a bit of honeycomb stencil that I put down on the jelly plate, and it had ink or paint on it. So I've just turned it over and so I used it as a stamp and stamped it on the paper, and we sort of get these effects as well, which is really cool. I tried to do when I do jelly printing, I pick out four or five colours at the end of that signature. And I sort of stick with the same colours and doing a variety of techniques. So then I have quite a few pages for my journals. So this one's using big bubble wrap. Basically you roll your paint out, press your big bubble wrap into it and then take a print of it. 
sorry about the camera angle. I'm going to work on my camera angles when I get a new camera, hopefully from Santa Claus for Christmas. So this one is the brown paper and I've actually just stamped around the edge of it and inked around the edge of it with stays on ink so that can be painted over or something can be placed in the middle. It's another jelly print. Just on regular, the white ones are the regular photocopy paper. This one is brown paper again and some more stencil ones. So that's the end of that signature. So you can sort of see on the back there's sort of got the same the same print. There's that. I can move this with my other hand. That same bird one. This is um, what I call my wipe off paper. So basically when I've finished rolling out a certain colour series on my jelly plate, I've got ink on my roller. So again I go to my extra stack of paper and just roll the colours on and you get some really cool interesting effects. So this is another one. Um, this is actually two jelly prints, one over the top of each other. So the below one you can see in the white patches there, you can see if you look very closely, you can see a diamond effect. It was a very light, um, light jelly print and then I've done the dark purple over the top. I'm loving this jelly printing that you can just go over the top of. There's a little little one. Another one of um, just paint through a stencil. When I had some leftover paint, this one is gorgeous. It's metallic and you can see the big bubbles there uh, from the bubble wrap. So you can go into these jelly prints, you can then go around and redoodle over all the balloons or make them into balloons. You can do it over the circles, you could just do a line of them, you can sort of add as much or as little as you like to the jelly prints. You can stick photos in here, use it as a reminder book, any sort of book. Um, so there we go, that's finished. There's another jelly print on the back. And you can see there's got some have got bits of paint on them. Some times when you change colours with the jelly print, you'll have a little bit of paint left over, or your roller may have a bit of paint on it, or you may stick your stencil in another bit of paint and then put it on so that you get pick up other colours as well. Okay, so to include with this, so that's the the book done. It's just bound with baker's twine, so it can easily come undone as well if Irene wants to change it or alter it or add to it. Totally up to her. What I've actually put in with it is some big A4 pieces. These are just done on regular photocopy paper. So this one's one of my stencils that I sell in my store. Um, so this is a heart stencil. You've got butterflies and flowers. So with this particular one you can cut out the butterflies and flowers and use them. You can use it as a whole sheet. Again some more. This is sort of the traditional what we call the first pull of the jelly plate. So your stencil is blocking out where the white is and then you're getting the paint picked up through the stencil. Then when you do a second print, this is the sort of effect you get with the second print because you've already taken the paint away from where the butterflies are and this is the residual paint that was sitting under your stencil. So you can get quite a few different effects with the same stencil and this one is probably one of the second or third print. It's very light. So I've added some goodies to for Irene to add to her journal or use on other things in her art journal. A couple of tags I made. Um, just trying to pick up. There's a whole pile of stuff down here. This is stamped on some. If I can get the, to show up, some security envelopes. So I use those sometimes to wipe off all my excess paint when I am jelly printing. So I've cut some of my jelly prints up into funky pieces and corners that can be used in our art journaling. Um, some more borders and things I make. A lot of these I make for swaps and I have extras so I have them in the pile to gift out to so that one I've just that's a jelly print that I've just doodled over the top of with a white pen. Um, that one's made from a jelly print in the background and put a dragonfly and a bit of washi tape on the bottom. So here's some more little some more little stamped labels that have been done on security envelopes. There's another one with a bit of paint on it. Oops, there's another one of those. Oh, and another one. I threw quite a few of those in the pile. So I love this bubble wrap one. Um, and what I've also popped in is some homemade washi tape for Irene as well. So these were made on a big sheet. Um, basically, this is. I'll take. I'll just put one up in my hand. This is masking tape, and I've also got some tape that has brown paper on the back of it. So all these are adhesive. If I can find one to peel off. Um, so basically I take a big piece of gladback paper, you know it in Australia, or any greaseproof paper, put your strips of masking tape down or this brown tape I picked up, 
um, and then you basically add colour and stamp and go wild on the bit of paper and then when you peel it off you actually get smaller versions of it. So there's actually a bunch of different ones. I've actually stamped with this particular one. So there's a stamp behind it and then I put some paint in the middle of the stamp, went around it with a black texture so you can go as crazy or as nice as you like. So these ones are all tapes I've included for Irene to have a go in her art journal. Um, so you notice with the stamping with this particular one, none of my stamps actually go the same way as the tape does because this tape will pull off this way and then you've just got bits of the stamps as well as this one. So this, this one's actually two pieces together so you actually just tear it tear it off the paper. Oops. There's a big blob of paint stuck on that one. And then you can sort of see that that's a decorative piece of tape. These yellow circles here are actually done with a paint pen so they're a bit raised. So that's my entry to Seriously Scrapping's 450 Subby Challenge. Hope you enjoy the art journal Irene and can um, have a play in it as you're going down your art journaling um, art journaling, oh, what do you call it, process, art journaling journey probably and I hope you can put this to use. I'm going to make a few more of these because I absolutely love this one um, and you might see a few more on my channel and I'm definitely going to learn how to bind them a little bit better. There's nothing wrong with this binding, I like it but it's probably a bit more secure if I actually sew the signatures in properly. Um, but again I like this style because you can take them out and you can add more pages to it and the book's thick enough to be able to expand. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed my entry into that challenge and I'll talk to you later. Thank you.